how you entrepreneurs today we have robert farrington if you have any kind of student debt you're going to want to hear this he's the founder of the college investor he gives great insight into the idea of how you can get debt free how you can live a, a more stressless life and understand what a dollar means so hopefully you enjoy this hopefully you subscribe and hopefully you'll tell your friends Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with real estate agent Vinny SD. All right, so we are here with uh, Robert Farrington, the founder of The College Investor. Yep. All right, so tell us a little about the the College Investor, what you do. Dude, well, thank you for having me. I have one of the largest personal finance sites for millennials out there. Uh, we get over 3 million visitors a month. And really, we just talk about personal finance, student loans, investing, and building wealth. And my goal is to help people get out of debt early so they can start building that wealth in their 20s and 30s and set themselves up for life. So let me guess. You went to college, took on debt, and that's where you came up with the... Yes and no. Okay, so I mean, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I went to UCSD right here in San Diego. Okay. Um, I left with about 42000 uh, in student loan debt okay. uh, when I was all said and done. And I paid it off in about two and a half years. Okay, nice. Wow. And I did it through my story of side hustling. I'm a huge advocate of earning more money. Yeah. So even when I was like a teenager, I was like side hustling. I was selling stuff on eBay in high school. I had like wow. my old Super Nintendo. I was like hawking that stuff. And then when I ran on my own stuff to sell, I was going to yard sales and estate sales. Wow. And I was selling stuff. And so all the way through high school, college I was doing that one well, all through high school but at the end of high school college um, and that propelled me and I was just really passionate about investing personal finance and using your money in a positive way and so uh, I started reading some blogs like how to make money online yeah <laughs> right pretty cliche right here we are in a I podcast. see all those posts all the time <laughs> right but I was like that's a good idea because yeah. I was all about hustling and yeah. making money so I was like I could start a blog and that's how I started the college investor nice. and uh, it just kind of grew from there and now here we are almost 10 years later Wow. Okay. Right. So were you a writer previously? Did you write a lot of stuff previously or how did you? I think I found that I was a writer. Okay. Um, I went to college actually to be a computer science major. Okay. And I found out I hated it. Okay. So like, I really liked the logic and the science behind programming and making stuff, but I hated like sitting in a computer lab programming all day. Yeah. So I switched my major to political science. And that is all writing. Like yeah. literally all you do is write essays. And I was actually really good at it. And so that kind of just com combined with my interest, right? I like making money. I found out I could write. Yeah. I can write pretty fast. Um, and so, yeah. And now I've been doing it for a while. So I've gotten better at it. So how do you, how have you been getting eyes on your platform? How have you been growing your platform? What's been kind of like the ID behind that? Well, I mean, it's taken time, right? So my site's 10 years old. When I started, like nobody read it. Yeah. And so one of the first articles that kind of got shared virally, and it's yeah. all relative, but yeah. I wrote about my battles with student loan debt. So my loan servicer jacked up my payments, tried to say I was late when I wasn't, and uh, I had to go dispute it. And then I wrote my story about it. Yeah. And then I started getting people saying like, that's happened to me. And they started sharing it on Facebook. And uh, that really like took off. And so yeah. I was like, oh man, I need to start writing about not necessarily what I want to talk about, but what people care about. Yeah. And so that's where I started talking a lot about student loan debt and going through the battles there. And as you know today, that's making the headlines every other week, it seems like today. How long did it take you to, to figure out not writing for what you wanted to write, but what people wanted to read? Yeah, that was about probably a year and a half. And okay. so like, honestly, my blog made no money for like the first year and a half. Okay. I did it because I was passionate about it, right? Yeah. And uh, I was learning how to do it. I liked some of the tech stuff, um, but it didn't really take anything, any traction or anything, right? Yeah. And uh, then it started getting some traction, and about a year and a half in, I made my first, like, 20 bucks. Wow. And it was, like, through AdSense. And I was like, <coughs> okay, this is awesome. I made 20 bucks. And then, you know, I started growing and growing, and I started writing more content. Um, you know, that was a kind of hybrid, what people yeah. care about, my, you know, personal take on it, and then longer and better, and then just, I kept learning too, right? So has it mostly been monetized through ads then on the page? So we mostly advertise uh, through affiliate marketing, okay. um, brand partnerships, uh, so a lot of major companies we work with, and then uh, a little bit of display, not so much. But back in the day, it was mostly display, but you know the internet's evolved. People don't like display ads all over their, yeah, yeah. <laughs> their websites anymore. So uh, did you have any, I know you had a little bit of uh, computer knowledge. Yeah. 
did you build yourself? Did you have someone you bring someone on or how did that work out to No, I totally that? just built it myself. Okay. I just followed some of these online tutorials and it really like when people say it takes like five, ten minutes, you can get started in five to ten minutes. Yeah. It does not take long at all. Like and then you just learn as you go. The cool thing I love about the internet is that nothing's permanent. So yeah. you can iterate. And I think that's uh, one challenge a lot of people face when they're starting something is that they think like they have to get it right from the start. Yeah. And the one thing, I, I still don't have it right. I go back and delete stuff all the time. I rewrite things. I make them better. <coughs> it's not permanent, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And so you can change it. If something sucks, delete it. If something's awesome, like add more to it. Like It's not a book, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's, that's what I've learned. So you've, you've really just been, did you get feedback from people or have you just been like, like how, how are you like getting the knowledge of, okay, this one's getting a lot of a fanfare on it. This one's not. This one. This website looks a little better. I'm gonna clean it up. It's just been. Yeah. So now it's intuition a lot. Okay. Like, I've been doing it for ten years. But you know, when I started, it was people would leave comments. People would leave social shares. Mm -hmm. And like when you go from nothing to like suddenly you get ten comments, like you must something must be there. Yeah. Right. And so then you can like figure out what people are talking about. Um, I also read a lot online. So I'm on Reddit a lot. I'm in Facebook groups a lot. What are people mm. talking about? And those are really great places to find ideas mm. um, that you can write about or create content around. Yeah. Uh, so now, what kind of struggles have, have you have it come through to actually build this blog over the last 10 years and make it profitable, I guess? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing was, like, like I said, that first year and a half, I didn't make any kind of traffic or any traction, and I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And so one of the big turning points that I realized, I didn't necessarily know it was a struggle, but I was just doing it by myself. Okay. So I read a how-to guide, right, and I tried yeah. to do it. And then like I like stopped reaching out to like other people or connecting or networking. And uh, about that year and a half, two year mark, right when I started making a little bit of money, I also started connecting with other bloggers in the personal finance space. Oh wow! Um, I found some forums. This was back, you know, eight years ago when forums were still a thing, right? Um, and just like interacting, sharing their content, putting my stuff out there to share, helping answer questions. They would answer my questions, and uh, I kind of realized that it was the power of networking, right? Like, so you don't have to do things alone. Like, if I would have reached out so much sooner, I kind of like would have had like a year and a half, two year head start of where I've been, but it was just the fact that I tried to do it all myself when I could have been networking and learning, and, you know, connecting with others that are doing it would have pushed me so much farther along. So like on your website, then you have links to other, other bloggers. That, Absolutely. Okay. And yeah. And they have the same links for you. And so it kind of drives traffic to well, both platforms. Yeah. I mean like my goal is to write the best content out there for yeah. whatever we're talking about, yeah. which should naturally entice people to link to it. Yeah. Um, you know, so hopefully it's the best on whatever subject is, but you know, I also will reach out and be like, uh, you know, I mean, I got this real estate article. I think it's the best of whatever. And yeah. then hopefully like you like it and would link to it. Yeah. Like not because I'm necessarily asking, but also because it's the best, it's the best content. And yeah. you give, that makes sense. So has it mostly been kind of just understanding that networking is a good thing? Is networking that is a huge thing. So I, I've kind of transformed my belief now and it's, you know, it's collaboration is so much better than competition, Yeah, especially online because you know, you know, there's 2000 plus personal finance blogs. Yeah. Right. And yet look at America today. <laughs> Clearly we're not getting the message out there. <laughs> oh yeah. No, <laughs> it's... Right. And I've also learned that people want to get their content the way they want to get it. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's the Fox news, MSNBC thing, but like people like maybe conservative content, maybe liberal content. It's the same news. Yeah. They just want their own spin on it. Maybe they like funny. Maybe they like the daily show. Yeah. Right. Like it's the same kind of news articles, but with the spin on it, it's the same in money. It's the same in any vertical. Right. Like people yeah. want to consume their content. Maybe they want visual. Maybe they want audio or on a podcast. Right. Like how can you transform your content and deliver it to your audience in a way that they will relate to, um, even if it's the same stuff as somebody else? Well, one thing that, uh, that I've talked about on this podcast before is the idea of uh, abundance of scarcity. I think most people look at scarcity oh, and yeah. they just go, OK, you know what? This other person's a blogger and I got to hold my knowledge right here. And the same with the idea of abundance like you're talking about. Yeah. It's going to help everyone grow. Totally. And someone's connect more with you than maybe the other person. And that's exactly what it is. And at the same time, like, you know, you can learn from each other. Like you're not the best at everything yeah. and they aren't the best at everything either, but they probably are doing some things. Well, maybe you can learn a little bit from that. Maybe they'll learn something from you. And like everyone grows together. Like, would you rather have, you know, a hundred dollars all to yourself? Or what if you could both make 200? Yeah. You make a hundred dollars more, right? Like it's so much better. Oh yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, if, if you could look at basically your younger self, and I'm, I'm, ass I'm assuming when you first started college, you might have switched your, your major first, but other things that you might have looked at your younger self, kind of give advice or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's. Well, I'd say the biggest piece of advice I have is that, you know, there's a few things that really are going to make the difference in your life after graduation: hmm. how you communicate with people, 
and how you can problem solve. Okay. And you don't necessarily learn those in school, yeah. right? Like business communication is huge. Verbal communication is huge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, after I graduated, the college investor was my side gig. I didn't just jump right into this. I worked full time as a store manager at Target. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and I did that for, I worked for, you know, 17 years at Target before I left oh. and doing the college investor full time. When I started at Target back when I was in high school and college, um, it took about three interviews to hire one person. When I left two years ago, it was up to seven interviews to hire one person. Wow. You know what the difference was? Because I'm just hiring cashier, sales floor. Yeah. They can talk to you. <laughs> like, I just want you to talk to me. Yeah. I want you to say hi. I want you to greet me. I want you to, like, literally not look at your phone in an interview. I want you to, like, get... That was the biggest thing that they couldn't... They can't speak. Oh, wow. They can't communicate. Because, you know what? I could teach anyone how to freaking run a thing over a scanner. Beep, yeah. beep, and hit total. I can't say, hello, how you doing today? Can I help you find anything? Like, Why do you think speak. it is? I think it's just what we've taught our generation. Like, they're, I would say you know, millennials and young adults today are great communicators yeah. online. They just can't verbally communicate, but they're Snapchatting, they're Instagram messaging, they're on Facebook, they're texting, they're on their phones. Um, probably more communication than we've ever had in the history of the world, hmm. but it's not verbal. And I think one of the things that make a big difference in life, like whether it's your own business or you want to apply for a job or you want to get ahead in your current career is how well you can communicate with your boss, with the customer, with a client. And, and that's huge. With, so you were at Tar you're managing Target. Mm -hmm. How long into the college investor did it take for you actually to give up the job at Target? Uh, I was doing it eight years before I gave up my job at Target. Okay. Okay. So you, so more recently than the last couple yeah. of years, right? Two years ago is yeah, when I years. left Target. Wow. And, so, uh, yeah. What was, what was that? What was that thing? What was that like moment where you're like, you know what? This is making me enough. I can do this. Well, so I actually was making more on my side gig than I was making at Target about two years before I left. Okay. And I was just stashing all that money away, just investing in it, getting out of debt, all that stuff, like just lining everything up. And then it was kind of like, like, why am I still at Target? I actually really like Target. It was a great company to work for. Um, you know, some people might bash retail hours, but like I found it really flexible um, to work at night because then you got your whole day yeah. free <laughs> to like do things, right? Yeah. Um, and it was great for running a side business yeah. because like you had these random days off in the week and you could do your side gig, right? Um, but like finally it was like, I have a family and the big drawback with retail is holidays and weekends. Oh, okay. And my son was, you know, at this time he was like three, but you know, he's getting older, wanting to do more things. And I really just wanted to be home with them yeah. and able to take him to school, able to like not miss a soccer practice, things like that. And that was the derailer. It wasn't like my boss or my job or anything. I really liked it. I liked who I worked with, but it was the schedule. Was it scared? Because now you're, you're not making as much money you know, with, with Target being out of the, the picture, was it scared at all of giving that up? Well, that's the thing. So I was making more money on my side job than I was at Target. But, two years before but, I it's, left. Still, but it's still money that you're, you're, you're basically giving up. Yeah, I should have done it like three years before that, though. Yeah? Yeah, just... because then it was like it was like exponential growth. Like oh, it did? Okay. Because then it was like, now I could devote all of my time right. and bandwidth to this thing that was already working really well. Uh, my wife and I used to joke, like, what if the internet turned off tomorrow? Like, are we still going to be okay? And it's like, we were already financially independent at that point in oh, time. Okay. So it was like, really, it was just for fun. And I still enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Was there, was there ever a point in the uh, building out the college investor that you're like, ah, man, this is not working out. Or this is, or has it always been kind of like, I have my faith. I have my mindset that this is going to work out. Well, it was always a hobby and it was yeah. always fun. So even when I doubted it, like I just had to check myself and remember that like, this is, was well, just a side gig. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, it fails. Like I was still at my day job at that point in time. Like, yeah. all right, if I didn't have any time this month to devote to it, like it's still just a side job yeah. and it's hard. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I remember like it was like mental anguish and sometimes my wife's looking at me like, you don't have time for that. Like it is a side job. Like I need you to do things. And so you have to realize that, but it's hard also when you like something hmm. like I enjoyed it. It was my hobby. And like, it's also like your wife telling you that you can't go out and do whatever it is you love to do as a hobby. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was hard because the time management piece was really the hardest piece. Nice. Now, well, what kind of, what kind of advice would you give to people thinking about going to college or planning the process or thinking on going to college is you need to think about the ROI of college. Okay, yeah. Return on investment. Yes. 
uh, you know, college isn't for everybody. If you're going to college to find yourself, please don't. It's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, go work for a year or two. Like, college is always there. You know, if you want to write a check to, you know, SDSU for 25000 bucks this year, they're going to take you. Yeah. I promise you. Like, they make it sound like, you know, all, all these people apply and we turn them down. Like, they will accept you. Maybe you have to go to community college first and catch up on some things. Yeah. But you can always go. All right, but you don't need to waste all that money if you have other career paths. There's a lot of vocational schools out there that are great. Uh, you know, you can go be an electrician right now, make 50 grand when you're 18, 19 years old, get on the job training, and then you know, four years later, you have a positive net worth of 50, 60 thousand bucks, and all the friends that you went to high school with are like trying to struggle out of student loan debt, and they're trying to pay off 40, 50, 60 thousand bucks. And if you continue that for the rest of your life you could really have yourself set up financially and you might be doing something that you enjoy a lot more. Seven uh, years or so, become a journeyman, make really good money. Like, bingo. <laughs> or, you know, well, maybe you want to get a little busy. Maybe you want to start your own company, have yeah. some more flexibility, right? You could do that too. Like the paths are there. Or I know a lot of people now that are in their early 30s and they're having, you know, midlife, like, quote unquote, career changes. Yeah. Like it's not fixed. Like you can jump industries. You can do different things in yeah. your life. Uh, you know, I know that's not what mom and dad said. And that could be hard. I mean, there's a lot of psychology here that's like, I make it sound like, oh, it's this easy thing. Like, you know, your friends will judge you and your family will judge you. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know what? You can do it yeah. if you can overcome those mental blocks. So let's say if someone is planning to go to college, the, the path that I haven't seen is more popular now, which I kind of wish someone would have told me back in the day, mm -hmm. was going to community college, getting your, your generals out of the way, and then going for your your degree or what do you think? Totally. It depends on what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you want to go be a doctor in a high earning profession, like mm -hmm. you got to take that path. You have to know you're going to take on $150,000, $200,000 in debt, yeah. but you also have to realize that there's an ROI on the end, right? Yeah. If you're a doctor, don't become a pediatrician. You're not going to be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. They're the lowest paid doctors. But if you want to specialize, you can become an orthopedic surgeon and make $800,000, $900,000 a year. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to be a teacher, right, you're going to yeah. make 45,000 when you graduate. Yeah. Yes, do the community college route, then switch to your state school, wrap up your whole degree for 20,000 bucks, you know, live with three roommates while you're going to school to save money on rent, like keep your expenses down. But then if you're graduated, even if you're only making $45,000 a year because you don't have a lot of debt and you've lived frugally, like you can have a good lifestyle as you start your working career. Is there a, a good platform that people can go to to assess what each uh, career actually takes in? Yeah, like Glassdoor okay. is a good one. Like, not only does it do careers, but Glassdoor does like people post their salaries for where they work. Oh, wow. So maybe like you wanna work at Google, like right? Like you can go see what an engineer at Google makes. Like mm -hmm. Google, and they'll put reviews on there and stuff. And so like there's millions of job postings there and you can see like not just careers, but locations. Cause like, you know, Google in San Francisco probably pays a lot more than working at Google in Texas. Yeah. Right? Like so. So it's just you can always not just do where to work, but like locations, careers, industries. Have a lot of people looking at your blogs reached out to you asking your feedback on different things? Oh yeah, I'll get tons of what, what kind of what kind of questions do people ask you? Oh, I get a lot of stuff on student loans. So okay. student loans is kind of our bread and butter, okay. right? Uh, we talk a lot about student loan forgiveness and different options. But sad to say, I see a lot of people that are in student loan debt and they're struggling. Right. So they're not hitting us when they're thinking about how to pay for college. Yeah. They're thinking about us when they're 40 or even up to, I had a 70 year old lady today, you know, reach out and says, I'm 70, I haven't paid my student loans in seven years. Like I have, I, I'm like, am I gonna die with this debt? Like what are the options? And that's sad. Yeah. Um, but that's the struggle and reality for a lot of people. And the thing is, there are a lot of options, but it's hard. It's a confusing system. There's over 150 different ways to repay your student loans, like between different repayment plans and forgiveness plans and loan types and all that stuff. So that's a mess. What do you What do you think would be the the, the best like a piece of advice that you've given those individuals, or do you? Yeah, the best piece of advice is find a student loan repayment plan that you can afford mm. and make your payments on every month. Okay. But before that, you have to get organized financially. So like the first question I ever ask people when it comes to their student loan debt is, well, how much is your monthly payment? Yeah. Do you know? Like what is your loan payoff date? Do you know? 99% of people don't even have a plan. How do you track your money? Yeah. Most people say nothing. Yeah. You know, every now and then I get lucky and they use Mint or a spreadsheet or everything, but most people don't track their money. They don't know their student loan repayment plan amount and they don't know when they're going to pay off their loans. Oh, so wow. getting organized yeah. is the starting point. And understanding it. And then once you're organized, you can get a plan that you can afford and repay and then go on and move forward with your life. Nice. Yeah. So no, I, I, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of people aren't trained on the idea of money or what money actually money is. It's so sad, right? Like, yeah. I mean, we teach kids trigonometry, 
yeah. but like we don't teach him how to budget and like tools to use. Like we keep it so philosophical, right? Like yeah. this is how you should do it. Like, no, freaking go open a bank account when you're a junior in high school and then link that bank account to Mint and start tracking what you're earning and what you're spending. Like it's not hard. We could easily teach these kids this, uh, but we don't. Yeah. And it's also because most parents don't. Yeah. Well, right? they yeah, probably don't know better. With that, with that idea of everything. Exactly. So so one of the big, I mean, it's, it sounds like, I mean, fairly simple then. So open a bank account, connect track, to the mint, yeah. and, and basically show you where you're, you're spending your money. Right. Track your spending, what you're earning, what you're spending, know the difference. Yeah. If you're positive, save that difference. If you're negative, like either earn more or spend less. Yeah. Like it's not hard. I mean, like I said, it goes back to that psychology. Yeah. And so I'm a big believer of earning more, right? Like I don't think that people need to cut. I think that you could earn your way into anything. And we live in this day and age where like you can make money anytime, anywhere on your smartphone. Yeah. Do you want to is the question because you can. What are some avenues you can make on your smartphone? Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates. Like the list goes on and on and on. Like 2 a.m. You can't sleep. You could turn on your phone and go drive for two hours and make 50 bucks. No boss, no requirements, no nothing. Like you just go do it. Yeah. Like where else in history have you been able to do that? And maybe Uh you say like, well, I don't want to do that. Well then like that's on you because you could. Yeah. It's not glamorous. It's not sexy. Your friends might judge you negatively for it. But in five years, if you're debt free and living a really positive life, you'll look back on those times and be able to share your hustling story where all your friends are like bitching that they can't afford anything. Well, wow, I mean, when you break it down to that simple as a form, that's, it re- makes it really look easy. Like, it, it, it is. It's yeah. easy, yeah. but it's psychologically hard. People yeah. don't like to be judged by their family. People don't like to be judged by their friends. Hey, what are you doing on Friday night? You know, oh, I'm going to go drive for a lift for four hours and like take advantage of like this premium pricing. Yeah, yeah, everyone's going to look at you funny. But you know what? Like, honestly, if you made a hundred bucks on Friday night, like you do that every Friday night for like four years, pay off your debt and you're buying a house and all your other friends that are still struggling, maybe they'll think differently of you in the future. I, I totally agree. <laughs> what, what's, what's the future of the College Investor? Where do you guys plan to go next? Yeah, I mean, we're just continuing to grow and have the best content we can. So, like, right now, we've already talked a lot about student loans, investing. We do a lot of banking. So we're just going to continue to drive those verticals. Um, You know, we have an audio show. We're trying to do more YouTube videos. Because my goal is, like, our content's good, but people don't always read. People don't always listen. People like to watch. Like, my brother-in-law told me, he's like, I'll never read a blog as long as I live. Like, I YouTube everything. And that's what he says. Like, you know, how to do this, how to do that. So we're trying to do more multimedia content um, to get people the same great information, but in a medium, they want to consume it. Okay, here's a hard-hitting question to finish this off. What was your best buy at one of the yard sales, garage sales, estate sales that you end up selling again? Do you remember uh-huh. the number of what you bought it for and what you were selling? I, I, I had a couple. Okay, uh, let's, let's so down. one of them was like a, a 24 set book set okay. of like the World War II in color. Okay. Okay. I paid a dollar a book. It was like 24 bucks. And I sold it for like 700 bucks. Whoa, gosh. Okay. Yeah. Because it was like some weird collectible thing. I was like eBay in and on my phone. Um, and the other one, I don't know if you drink uh, scotch. But Bow, okay. Bowmore, okay. really fancy distri- brewery or whatever. Yeah. This guy just had like empty collectible bottles, like in his house. Like yeah. guy was like a scotch drinker, and the, just the cases and the bottles alone are collectible. So I paid like two bucks each one. I had like ten of them, and I sold each of them for like four hundred bucks. Oh my god! Just for like the it was a wood case, the glass bottle. I got a lot of flack for that because I learned after the fact that I, people refill them with cheap scotch and try to sell them for like ten thousand yeah. dollars. They were buying the bottle for four hundred, but whatever. I still made four hundred bucks. Gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that's, that's some really good yeah, and that's it. So I mean, I was I was rolling about two thousand dollars a month at my peak. You yeah. know, go on the weekends and buying and reselling stuff. And that was net. And that, that was great way to pay down my debt. So that's a, that's a smart way. I, I haven't I haven't been to a state sale or do you usually go like, well, where would you go? Like, oh, I guess you want to give your well, you, do you still go I, every so, now and then if they're on my way or like if there was one like close by. Like I went to one the other day. It was after soccer. and My kid was done. It was like two houses down from the park. And I just walked in. But, you know, the trick with the state sales is you have to go on that first day. Yeah. You either go the first day or the last day. Okay. The first day has the most stuff. The last day is when they're desperate and they'll okay. give you good deals if there's, if there's anything left. Yeah. And then garage sales are super hit or miss because that's just people selling their own stuff. Yeah. It's not necessarily like the good stuff. The estate sales, like as sad as it sounds, like Those usually are- older people, they had a lot of antiques and like junk. And, and so... <laughs> Like to assess kind of what the value of what which item is, was it like just you take a picture of it or Google it or kind yeah, of I like- just Google it on my phone really quick. Like honestly, there's things I knew, so yeah. I usually knew electronics. 
Um, I got to know like rare books and stuff more. Um, some other things like pottery and stuff I got pretty good at, but like there was things I knew. My wife actually was pretty good. She used to find like designer clothes and she used to help me resell stuff too. So she'd go to like Ross yeah. and she'd buy like these $150 women's jeans for like 10 bucks and then we'd resell them on eBay for like 80 or $90. For, like, I didn't know what these jeans were, but she knew what, they, what was up with them and like she was finding those. And then my cousin is uh, just graduated from Chico State this week or last week. Um, you know, she does the same thing on Poshmark today. She goes to thrift stores, finds designer clothes, and she's reselling them on Poshmark, which is like the new eBay for clothes. Wow. So it's still totally possible. Yeah. Well, well thank you. This was uh, very informative. Yeah. yeah. So well, hopefully well, we provide some value. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I, hopefully all you listeners out there got some good information of how to get rid of your, your debt if you're in that, that avenue. If you're even looking to build a blog, uh, come from um, not scarcity, but come from abundance. And abundance will will help you out and let you grow. Exactly. In any avenue, not just blogging in any business. doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Well, thanks again, Robert. It was, a, it was a pleasure hearing from you. Hopefully, all you entrepreneurs got some great information. And please tell your friends to subscribe. And hopefully, you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.vinnysd.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. Team Vinny SD, signing off.